What if I told you someone averaged 17, 6, and 6 as a rookie, missed more or less their entire second season, and came back averaging 23 and 7? How would you feel about that? Would you think the ship has sailed on him becoming a superstar? Would you think he has no impact? I understand the Detroit Pistons have been absolutely abysmal, but this is where we have to look into things. Cade Cunningham has been hovering in and around 23 and 7 all season with at times some of the worst spacing known to man. Again, I understand just how awful this team was and how that will impact how the players on the team are perceived in media, but many making out Cade to be a part of the problem with the Pistons really upset me. Cade Cunningham is one of the more interesting stories in recent NBA history, and today I'm going to be reviewing his career thus far and why I think he could still become a superstar in this league. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It would help me out a ton. Smaller NBA YouTuber trying to grow, and without further ado, let's get right into the video. I always liked Cade as a prospect, as pretty much everyone did, but I didn't really become a real advocate for him until the start of this season. It was just so weird to me how, again, a former number one overall pick averaged 17, 6-6 six six as a rookie, got hurt, and was completely forgotten in mainstream NBA fandom. What started to grow out of the Pistons' struggles was even weirder, though. While I understand how a casual fan would immediately implicate the face of that franchise when a team is generationally bad, there were so many factors at play here. The funniest part is, it's impossible to nail everything down statistically because there were just so many factors. Spacing isn't optional in the modern NBA, and the Pistons learned that the hard way. The main culprit is Killian Hayes for sure, but things such as someone who was hovering in and around 15% from three, two bigs on the court, and injuries to shooters definitely didn't help. Just for the record, I think Asar Thompson is outstanding and has many elite tools, but from a spacing standpoint, he definitely contributed something negative here, which wasn't entirely his fault either because if he was the only factor, it would have been better, but anyways. Back to Killian Hayes though. This was some of the most disgraceful coaching I've ever seen. I made a video about the Pistons in the offseason, expecting them to be decent. I was under full assumption, as I think everyone was, that Killian Hayes would either be in a much lesser role or off the team altogether. I understand you drafted him 7th and want to give him his opportunity, but he had that opportunity last season when Kay was hurt, and he evidently wasn't good. A little bit of conspiracy brain is saying to me that these head-scratching roster decisions were deliberate to not only get the Pistons a better pick, but to also save on Cade's extension, but we won't get into that. While again, there were many factors at play here to make this roster this actually somewhat talented process Sixers bad, the epicenter of it is Killian Hayes, and the numbers back it up. Cade Cunningham this season with Killian Hayes is averaging 22-4-8 with 4 turnovers on 43-32-88 for a true shooting of 52.6%. Not like awful awful, especially for a second year player, but definitely not great by any means. Now Cade Cunningham without Killian Hayes this season. 24-5-7 with 3 turnovers on 52-46-80 for a true shooting of 61.1%. While we don't have the sample size we do for him with Killian, this is still a 16 game sample and we can begin to see what Cade might look like with any semblance of spacing. Again, not great or really even good spacing, just any level of it at all. The funniest part is the Pistons always had the tools to be at least not the worst team ever and probably not the worst team in the league even as they might not even be anymore soon. The bright side of this is that the Pistons will very likely have some of the best odds to get the number one pick in a season that wouldn't have had a playoff run even if they were being utilized properly. The narratives and speculations around the Pistons from people who watch a couple primetime games a week is funny and it's painfully obvious that these people have not actually watched the Pistons play. Now this is somewhat understandable as even people who are watching around the NBA likely aren't selecting the Pistons game over 3-5 to five others, but it's the talking like they are watching that isn't okay. What could be the most confusing part about the lack of hype around Cade to me is just how fun he is to watch. He very loosely resembles Shea in some ways as a bigger guard who creates in the mid-range and is a solid playmaker. Cade is already much more of a 3-point shooter than Shea has ever been, but as I said, very loose comparison. Another part of this comparison is that Cade is in a strikingly similar, but still worse situation to 2021 and 2022 Shea. I'm not saying I think Cade will be as good as Shea, but that we could see a similar path here. The Pistons are also far from the Thunder, but I really think a core of Cade, Ivy, Asar, Duran, and a top pick this year with supplemental shooting could make some noise. But back to Cade's game, which like SGA's is very pleasing to watch for me. His shot creation and tough shot making is a joy to watch. Obviously he has bad games, but when he's on, which since having any sort of spacing is pretty often, he is a dynamic player. 
Cade has been on an absolute heater recently, and while expecting this to be maintained isn't fair, I think we see more of this Cade to end the season. Over his past five games, Cade Cunningham is averaging 25, 5, and 7 with four turnovers on 57, 55, 75 for a true shooting of 68.4%. Cade's turnovers are his big concern at the moment, but we still have to keep in mind this is basically a second year player. His scoring has been on full display, including two games against an elite defense in the Magic and a fringe top 10 one in the Knicks. I use the with and without Killian Hayes stats to show this, but I just want to say again how much better Cade has been since not only his removal, but also the insertion of guys like Simone Fontecchio. The move was always to surround Cade, Ivy, and Duran with shooters and 3 and D guys, and I still scratch my head at why this wasn't done earlier. I understand there were a decent amount of injuries which had an impact, but this roster absolutely should have had more shooting and absolutely should have at least utilized the shooting that they did have more. Having Killian Hayes on an NBA roster is questionable, let alone starting him, let alone starting him over your more recent number 4 pick who averaged 16 and 5 as a rookie. I'm sorry, but I'd really love to have more information on how and why this even occurred because it was just so egregious that I am still pissed about the fact that it even happened. Anyways, back to Cade. I really think he can still be all NBA level and a face of a franchise, but he really just needs some sort of competence. I'm praying that Troy and Monty learn their lesson on spacing and continue to mold this roster around their young core. What happens in this draft lottery and the subsequent draft obviously has a massive impact on this team's future, but as I said, I think Cade Ivy Asar Duran is a future playoff core. That again brings back the positive of this situation, that you will very likely be afforded the opportunity to draft another franchise cornerstone to fill out your starting five. This isn't the greatest draft ever, as we know, but it has been heralded as a great draft for filling out a team, which I think is perfect for Detroit. An elite prospect obviously wouldn't hurt, but I think the ball handlers in Detroit are there. Alexander Saar is number one and could be that top tier guy while not being a primary ball handler, but I think Detroit has learned their lesson with hoping for the top pick or two or three or four. Regardless of where the Pistons land, they'll be able to get another great young piece. It's weird to say that a team that lost like 30 straight doesn't need a complete overhaul, but they really don't. Obviously some of the supplemental pieces have already been moved, but the core was always there. I feel really confident in saying that Cade Cunningham will be an all-star next year, given that the roster at least resembles something in the 21st century, of course. I just really can't wait for everyone to act shocked at this like Cade got that much better. He will improve, obviously, but I really don't see why he couldn't be a 25-8 and guy in even a slightly okay situation right now. Cade is truly one of my favorite young stars in the league, and I really hope the Pistons have learned their lesson and build the right way going forward, because he really deserves it. He has been backpacking this team while also carrying the burden of them being as bad as they were, and that just has to be an awful situation all around. This Cade redemption arc is going to be special, and I'll know I was there since the bottom. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, hit that noti bell, comment down below your thoughts on Cade, this recent stretch, your thoughts on this whole Piston season, really. I mean, man, it's just been abysmal. Again, I made that video in the summer, you know, thinking they were going to be decent, thinking that, you know, Killian Hayes, I, just, I'm sorry, I, I, I know I did the whole thing where I, I screamed about it. That was the most unreal, like that is what, when I said the thing a lot earlier about the conspiracy brain and them doing this to get a higher pick and save Cade and save money on Cade's extension, that is what makes me think about this because what justification was there for that? Like genuinely, what justification was there for starting him, starting him at all, like, like in a vacuum, whatever, like anyone, like, you know, like let alone of anything else, just any circumstances, starting Killian Hayes on an NBA team in 2023, 2024, that alone, we'll, right? We'll, we'll just sit with that right there, that alone, right? Let alone you have a number four overall pick from last year, who's a dynamic player, a great fit next to Cade, averaged 16 and five, was significantly better than Killian Hayes has ever been in his life. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Again, like, it's just it's just so crazy. And then you have that. Then you also have two bigs on the court, which, again, you know, Beef Stew has added that shot to his game, and you just gave him that extension. So you can't really, you know, you can't have a guy that you just paid $64 million. I mean, you could have him coming off the bench, obviously, but, you know, you're not going to. And then you have Asar, who I think is a great talent, but, you know, he might have not been the fit here. And I think they can still make it work. Again, if you, you know, you get some more guys, you, you know, slide out Killian Hayes and you, you know, have a SAR, you know, I, you know, a SAR is, you know, more or less your four spacing wise, like, you know, shooting wise, like, you know, you, you want to have uh, Cade, Ivy, a shooter and, you know, Duran will probably be there. And, and Duran's another guy that I'm like, you know, I, I feel, I, again, I think this team is there. Like, I really think the core is there. I think the core of Cade, Ivy, Asar, Duran could be a future playoff core. 
and then you have another guy coming in like this, uh, you know, this summer. So, you know, it should be, you know, last summer I thought things would start looking up in Detroit. It went the complete other way, but I really, 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 really like, I, again, man, unless they just go out and, you know, oh, we're going to run 1983 again because uh, we feel like it. But I, I don't think there, there's no way, man. But anyways, it's going to officially wrap this one up. I'm holding a USB something for my headset right now. Comment USB if you're still watching. I appreciate you. I just dropped it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.